Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to A Course in Miracles, to the workbook for students. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, from time to time, leading a group, it's worth taking a pause and just asking how it's going in general. Yeah, when I've taught a class in the past, I've often taken a pause midway through the curriculum or not necessarily midway, but part of the way through. And I've been willing pretty much to talk about anything. We all have lessons and there is a lesson for today that I do want to talk about, but how is the study and practice of A Course in Miracles going. This is an invitation for you to write to me. Email is great, tomas at tomasgarza.com or comment here on YouTube. And I'm very interested how all of this is going for you because you've reached a point here where we've done over half of the workbook lessons, which means you're not the same person that you were when you started out. Isn't that exciting? I'm sure you've had all kinds of things happen to you and you're clearly not the same person. And of course that makes sense, doesn't it? Because we're not the same person that we were 15 minutes ago. And at the top of the hour, we won't be the same person that we are right now. So, Massive transformation is in the cards for all of us, and that should be an exciting thing. So let me know how this whole process is going for you, because this is clearly what the workbook is. It's a process. It is, in fact, as world spirituality all is, an undoing. As much as we're apparently doing something, we're actually undoing, aren't we? We're taking a thought system that no longer serves us and we're letting it go. We're dismissing it. If you prefer the verb dismantling, we're dismantling it one step at a time one day at a time, one lesson at a time, and quite literally, because it's all we have, one moment at a time. Spirituality is so simple, isn't it? It's so simple, and yet we complicate it so much. As always, this is an invitation to you to recognize this and return to the simplicity the sheer, beautiful, gorgeous simplicity of who we are. And as with every day, this is something that I invite you to do. So let's jump right into lesson 194 here. Yeah, I place the future in the hands of God. I place the future in the hands of God. That's today's idea. Lesson 194, we live life anywhere but the present. It makes sense intellectually, yeah? It makes sense conceptually that the present moment's all we have. When you really think about it, that makes a certain amount of sense. It makes a certain amount of sense for someone like me or anybody to say that the past is gone. It is, of course it is. It also makes sense for someone to say the future is not yet here. Of course it's not. I mean, you can make a decision right now that impacts how you feel in 35 minutes, but when do you make the decision? Well, you don't make it 35 minutes from now, you make it right now. By the same token, you could dwell about what happened 35 minutes ago or 35 years ago. Yeah, does that ring a bell with anybody? Mm, how about that? 
And if you're dwelling on it, when are you dwelling on it? Not 35 minutes ago, nor 35 years ago. You're dwelling on it right now. It makes a certain amount of rational, logical sense that now is all we have. So why then the resistance? Why are we so brutally resistant to this principle? We can all say that we're resistant to it. And if you find yourself thinking, well, no, not me. I'm not resistant to it. No, I accept that. Really, do you? Think about it. Think about it. Do you ever dwell on the past? Do you ever obsess over the future? Our modern society, including this beautiful modern technology with which I share with you, is, well, it's a, it's a beautiful thing and it encourages us to be anywhere but for the present. In fact, before the advent of the internet, which I remember because I was born in 1971, and we literally played with sticks when we were kids and rocks and dirt clods, things like that. Oh yeah, yeah, fun times, fun times, yeah. Because we literally were turned out of our houses in the 1970s and told to come home for dinner when it's dark and roamed the streets for hours and hours and hours. Does that ring a bell with some of you? I know some of you from that era can relate. I remember what life was like without modern technology, without the internet, without even imagining that this level, this speed of communication in the world would be even possible, had no idea. Who did really? I mean, who among us knew that we'd be here in 2021? Even then, the world was set up for us to be anywhere but the present moment. It's set up for us to dwell on the past. This is what we habitually do. We obsess over the future, we dwell on the past. This is the thought system of the ego. When we adhere to it, this is what we adhere to. We're not present. You obsess over the past and the ego skips the present moment entirely. It's in fact, terrified of the present moment, during which time we all can and you will recognize its non-existence and leave it aside, which is what each and every one of us is working on here. Hmm. What happens when you place the future in the hands of God? In spirituality, many people talk about getting out of our own way, yes? What does it mean to get out of your own way? It is a practice, an ongoing practice of allowing when in the present moment, the only time that there is. It is allowing the voice for God, allowing your teacher, which does not have to be, which does not have to be the Holy Spirit, the universal inspiration, the voice for God of A Course in Miracles, by the way. These are universal principles that we're talking about here. That when you place the future in the hands of the power, higher than yourself. In other words, God, because that is the power, which you share in, by the way. And I know, I know, I know that you can feel this and that you know that. By placing the future in the hands of God, you're fully present. It's 
a process of letting go control, letting go your need to manipulate the outcome of the present moment and all future moments. You're releasing what is tantamount, whether you label it this or not in your own life, an OCD behavior, a chronic OCD behavior. The ego is like a chronic case of obsessive compulsive disorder, panic, torment, and irrational fear. All fear is completely irrational. It's not real. By placing the future in the hands of God, what you're doing is you are getting out of your own way. You are saying, I don't recognize my own best interest. Please help me. Very few things, if anything, that the ego fears more than that statement. I do not know my own best interest please help me. I do not know my own best interest. Please help me. I place the future in your hands. Hmm? What happens when you do that? You're fully present. You're letting go of an investment in the outcome which, as we all know, may or may not happen. You're letting go of all thoughts, hopes, dreams, plans even, and you're fully present, releasing the future to your teacher, to God, to your guide or guides. Again, this is all-inclusive material here. Releasing the future places you in the present moment. Notice we're not talking about the past at all. Let's all simply accept that it's gone. And life is one living, breathing, giant, walking, active meditation. When you notice yourself obsessing over the future, or when you notice yourself dwelling on the past, what you should or shouldn't have done or said on December 23rd, 1983 at 4.47 p.m. Yeah, you remember that time, right? Really, really poignantly. Or do you, truly? The past is gone. When you catch yourself obsessing over the future or the past, simply release the past or the future to your teacher. Bring your awareness and attention back to the present moment. How? By releasing the past, releasing the future, forgiving the past. Forgive the future. Simply forgive. When does one forgive? In the present moment. When does one dwell on the past? In the present moment. When does one obsess over the future? In the present moment. There is only the present moment. Forgive the past. Release the future. Place the future in the hands of God and see what your present moment experience will be like. We invite you to do just that. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> what I find is I have a very, very little sometimes to add to this message. As I wrap up, I want to reiterate that A Course in Miracles is universal in theme, it's universal in application. So whether you take the Holy Spirit, the voice for God, the universal inspiration, whatever and whomever your teacher or teachers are, yeah, 
because you may have more than one guide. Modern spirituality is full of multiple guides. Now, you must find the one or the guides, plural, that speak to you. It really is just one, in fact. Just like there's just one of us. We just appear to be in seven or eight billion little separate component parts. <laughs> we recognize that's not true in any way, shape, or form. But my point here is that A Course in Miracles applies across the board. So whether this is your primary spiritual practice or not does not make any difference. Every living being can benefit from the message that I just delivered here. And you know what? It's not me delivering the message. That's important. That's important, isn't it? It's important that I say that. It's important that you, as the person watching this video, recognize that as well. Because when you show up in the world and extend love, when you show up and teach, it's not the ego you, an individual, doing the acting. It's all of us. It is the Holy Spirit, the voice for God. If you take Jesus or Buddha or an archangel, for example, as your teacher, it's your teacher speaking through you. Love, when we extend love, love is unitary. It is one. It is not split off into multiple component parts. There's no such thing as a part of love. It's whole and unitary. So any person in the world can take the teachings of A Course in Miracles and apply them. One does not need to possess the book. There's plenty of information available online. Oh, this can be something that you just pop in on and check up on from time to time. And that is absolutely okay. This is why I'm recording these videos. It's why they're going to live on YouTube and perhaps other platforms as well. But they're there because in my capacity as a teacher, as a channel for the Holy Spirit, I never know who's going to be watching. You never know who's going to need to hear your voice on a given day. So I invite you to do what you're doing and continue to watch and continue to practice. And as always, I thank you very much for joining me here today. Have a wonderful day.